Hey, what's that? Uh, my mom moved, so she sent me a box full of my old stuff. Look at this. Yearbooks, pictures, my ballet shoes. <laughs> you took ballet? My mother wanted me to. She was a very involved parent. You know? I guess because she raised me by herself. She also sent me to cooking school. So she was both mother and father to you? And you were both son and daughter to her? <laughs> hey, it just so happens a lot of very masculine men perform ballet. Ooh, my Barbie town car! <laughs> Batty bonkers crazy, loopy loony hazy Chaotic, neurotic, peculiar and amazing Demented, deranged, particularly strange Frantic, crazy, shaky, flaky, making me insane uh, Freaks and Geeks I'm Joshua Jackson Remember I told you I was being interviewed for an article in the Yale Alumni Magazine? Remember? How could I forget? It's the neatest thing ever! Uh, well, the student who's writing it was wondering if he could observe us working together someday, you know? Get a feel for what we do. Maybe that would... What's this reporter's name, anyway? Price, why? Come on in, Price. Uh, Price Whitman, uh, this is Ian Stark. Wow! Mr. Stark, this is such an honor. I mean, Henry's already told me so much about you. Oh, he has? You know, how you're the kind of writer who generates a lot of raw material, which Henry then sifts through to find the book. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Sometimes I just type pages and pages of words, which Henry cleverly arranges into sentences and paragraphs. Well, and did I... you know that every morning Henry picks out my clothes so I don't accidentally go outside wearing the shower curtain? <laughs> we laugh like this every day. <laughs> Coffee? I'm sure. So, uh, Price, why did you decide to profile him? Well, why wouldn't I? I mean, he started off editing the school newspaper and look where he is now. Working closely with people like... Well, you. So what you're saying is, the most interesting thing about Henry is me. <laughs> Obviously, he's joking. <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. Seriously, what is interesting about you? Well, I... Uh, I would have to say... Uh, and that's just off the top of his head. <laughs> Is anyone else belching up that pizza? Because all I'm tasting... Oh, hello. Hi. Uh, Price, this is Maddie Keller. Price is interviewing me for the Yale Alumni Magazine. Well, nice to meet you. That's an interesting name. Short for Madeline? Actually, my real name is Margaret, but as a kid, I was always mad at something, so my parents gave me the nickname. <laughs> Gosh, are the movie rights available to that story? <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, we're kind of in the middle of something. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, if Price and I are in the way... Price <laughs> is not in the way. So, cuckoo ca -choo, Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> well, it was really nice meeting you. Well, you too. And you don't seem so mad to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can start calling her by her new nickname, Lucy. <laughs> sorry. Business calls. <laughs> McNeely here. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> hi, Grandma. I said, hi, Grandma! I'm sorry, I should probably take this. God knows how much time she's got left. Oh, that you heard. <laughs> I don't mean to impose, but would you mind if I ask you a few questions? All right, what do you want to know? How do you feel about the fact that you're considered the finest new writer in this genre? <laughs> well, finest is such a subjective term. I mean, after all, it's, it's not a competition, is it? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just happy people like my book. Do you feel pressure to surpass the brilliance of Below Ground? <laughs> well, you, you, know, you don't set out to create brilliance. You just tell your story. <laughs> if it happens to be brilliant, so be it. Uh -huh. 
Where were you from June of 1981 to December of 1982? Henry, it's just that those 18 months are left off all your bios. Where were you? Nowhere. <laughs> well, you had to be somewhere. Look, this story isn't even about me. <laughs> Henry! Come on, Mr. Stark, a person doesn't just vanish. I didn't just vanish, okay? Then where were you? Not that this has anything to do with Henry, but I was living on an Indian reservation in New Mexico. Really? What reservation? Hopi. Huh, I never knew that. Wow, a man of letters among the Indians. That sounds so interesting. I went to Apache day camp. <laughs> if you don't mind my asking, Actually, why Actually, I, I do mind. I'd rather you just stick to Henry. Thanks. I was chosen to read to the little braves and squaws around the campfire, which ignited my passion for storytelling. And my moccasins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you getting this down? <laughs> Then, when he asked him, get this, Ian suddenly reveals he lived on a Hopi Indian reservation. That is unbelievable. Let me ask you something. Was Price checking out my ass when I walked out of the room? <laughs> we spent so much time together. I wonder why he never told me about that. Oh, maybe it's really personal. Maybe he fell in love with the Hopi woman and moved there to be with her. Hmm, well, I guess that's possible. The Native American ladies can be very sexy. Look at Pocahontas. Please tell me you don't mean the cartoon. Of course not. Okay, what, there's another Pocahontas? <laughs> Henry. Oh, hey, Price. Oh, hi, Maddie. You work here? Oh, part-time. I'm also a student, just like you. Only his school's motto isn't learn while you sleep. <laughs> Speaking of sleeping, how's that article on Henry coming? Well, actually, that's why I stopped by. I did some checking, and it turns out Mr. Stark did not live with the Hopis in New Mexico like he said. Do you have any idea why he would lie about a thing like that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, you're talking about my friend. If he says he lived on a Hopi reservation in New Mexico, then he lived on a Hopi reservation in New Mexico. There is no Hopi reservation in New Mexico. You know what else he lied about? <laughs> He said Maddie ate all my ice cream because she was so depressed about being too old for that college guy. Uh, um, I'll speak to Ian about it. I'm sure there's an explanation. Yeah, I've got the explanation. He ate my ice cream and blamed it on sorry old Maddie. Shake! I'm sure you'll be able to find out what's going on. Oh, I'm late. I'll see you tonight. Okay. And for whatever it's worth, I think you're beautiful. Any guy would be lucky to go out with you. Thanks. You know, maybe we could go out and have a drink sometime. Yeah, in six months when I turn 21. <laughs> okay. Well, see ya. <laughs> so what is that, September? <laughs> hey, can I get a beer? What? You never lived on an Indian reservation, did you? Huh? Price was just here. He told us there are no Hopi reservations in New Mexico. Oh, who cares? This is supposed to be your story. Why the hell is he digging around in my life? It's none of his business. Why are you getting so defensive? No one's digging around in your life. So where were you? Yeah, where were you? And where's my ice cream? <laughs> All right. Listen, I do not want this getting out. Those missing 18 months, I was at the Sunnyvale Mental Institution. Hey, don't change the subject! <laughs> Hi, Henry. Sorry I'm late. Okay, no problem. Have a seat. <laughs> By the way, did you ever get to the bottom of that whole Indian thing? What Indian thing? Uh, it's a long story. Uh, no, I'm afraid Mr. Stark didn't want to talk about it. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. What are you doing? Well, to me, the most interesting thing about this story is the relationship of the editor and the writer. I just don't want to write another so-and-so is taking the world by storm, his future looks great, sky's the limit. We love stories like that. It's what the readers want. <laughs> the problem is, you and Mr. Stark don't seem that close. What? How could you say that? 
he clearly lied to you about the Indians. And when you confronted him, he still didn't trust you enough to tell you the truth. So now you're just going to scrap the whole article? I guess I could do a blurb in the where are they now column. <gasps> a blurb? I most certainly do not want a blurb. <laughs> I did not work my butt off for the last five years to wind up a blurb. A blurb. I don't think so. Listen, Henry spends hours and hours with Ian. Every day they are, they are very good friends. My God, he just told Henry today that he spent a year and a half at a mental institution. Really? Tess? What? That's a very private thing to share. You don't tell something like that to a stranger. That's why he disappeared. He was in an asylum. Which one? It was a... <laughs> you, 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 you can't print that. Tess didn't know that it was told to me in confidence, so it shouldn't be part of this story. Are you kidding? It is this story. How do you know? How do you know? Maybe you haven't dug it around enough in my past, because let me tell you something. It's dark in there, baby. <laughs> That's right. Did you know that he had absolutely no body hair until he was 17 years old? <laughs> he had to take sheep hormones, which had the unfortunate side effect of giving him little breasts. Yeah, my eyes are up here, buddy. He left. Oh. Did you get today's paper? Uh, not yet. Why? This is bad. This is really, really bad. Tess accidentally told that reporter that Ian was in an institution, and... Then what? He sold the story to the Times. Henry, Ian told that to me in confidence. <laughs> he told us that. Well, he was looking at me. This is gonna kill him. I know. He's never gonna forgive you. I know. You realize I can't stay here to help him. I know. <laughs> I can't. Okay, good boy. Oh, hey, 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 hey. You want some coffee? Oh, uh, sure. Um, Ian, you, you didn't happen to see... See what? Nothing. You know, um, as friends, sometimes we're called upon to, to forgive the other one for, for, for something because, 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 because... Because of the wonderful things he does? <laughs> Ian, something bad happened. And when I tell you what it is, you're gonna be justifiably enraged, and I only ask that you try to restrict your blows to the fleshy parts of my body. <laughs> in today's times... There was an article about me being in the funny farm. I... 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 I am the Frito Bandito? <laughs> you're not mad? Did you mean to leak it? No, of course not. It was a complete accident. Then I'm not mad. But now the whole country knows that you were in a mental hospital. Hey, as long as they spelled my name right. <laughs> wow. I never know what I'm going to get with you. Sometimes it's like you're two different people. Well, that's three less than I used to be. <laughs> How could he forgive me like that? It doesn't make any sense. Especially after what you did, revealing something that he told me in confidence. He told all of us. He was looking at me. He was looking at me. The only way he'd be looking at you is if you got your little breast back. <laughs> Tess told me. Where are you going? I'm gonna go do some digging around. Something isn't right about this thing. Price wasn't the only muckraker to come out of Yale. When I was on the school paper, I did an expose on the fake crab in the dining hall's Neptune salad headline, what you see food isn't what you get. 
Do they beat people up at a fancy college like Yale? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Jacob Donovan's private, personal, secret journal. <laughs> Mind if I read it? No, why would I? <laughs> May 8th, 1985. I read an article about how university researchers use computers to share information. I think this could be the future. People communicating through computers, maybe a global network allowing people to connect like never before. Starting tomorrow, I will do everything in my power to be a pioneer in this worldwide web of computers. Jake! <laughs> you predicted the internet before there was an internet. Why didn't you follow through with this? I don't know. Let me check the next day. <laughs> Smoked pot for the first time. The day after. Smoked pot. <laughs> Smoked pot. <laughs> Followed out computer to hide pot. <laughs> hey. I know why you were so nice about that story being leaked. Why? Because it's not true. How do you know that? I did a little investigating, Ian. Took a ride upstate to Sunnyvale. Guess what I found out? That macaroni, glue, and a paper plate can keep you busy for years? <laughs> no, that you were never a patient there. You made it up, just like the Hopi Indian story. All right, look. What are you trying to cover up? Nothing. Then why do you keep lying? Because, damn it, Henry, I was in jail. For what? I... I... Rob, a train. <laughs> Where were you? <sighs> Fine. Wow. You don't trust me. Well, why should I? And look what happened. I told you that lie in confidence, and it ended up in the newspaper. <laughs> you betrayed me. If you didn't tell me the truth, I couldn't betray you. You didn't even trust me enough to give me the opportunity to betray you, and that really hurts. Oh, come on. I thought this was a step in our relationship, you're confiding in me. I thought you were opening up. I was devastated when it was in the paper, because I had thought I had hurt a friend. But I am no more of a friend to you now than I was the day I walked in here. All right, wait a minute. For what? For what? So that you can make up another story? Clearly, you don't want me to know anything about your life. Okay, fine. I got it. I won't ask any more questions, and you won't have to lie anymore. All right, all right. You want to know where I was for that year and a half? Fine. Lock the door. Lock it! What are you doing? I'm going to show you something, Henry. And it may disgust you. I am trusting that you will never tell anyone about this. It happened at the lowest point of my life. And I only keep it to remind myself of how far I can fall. I am so deeply ashamed of what is on this tape. Hey, man, it's okay. <laughs> No, no, no. Whatever you did, you did. It's cool. It's cool. You don't... Sit down. Sit down. I was living in Florida. Flat broke. No direction. I saw an ad in the newspaper. They were holding auditions. It was fast money. I 
You get sucked into the life, Henry. <laughs> now you know. So wait a minute, you would rather have everyone think you were in a mental institution than... <laughs> I understand.